Welcome back to Askewed Reviews. Today we have another fan request, and this time it is for the 1997 horror sci-fi Event Horizon. Here is your trivia question for today. What tabletop game was an inspiration for this film? The answer will be at the end of this video. The movie begins with a little bit of backstory. So apparently in 2015, the first permanent colony was established on the moon, and in 2032, commercial mining began on Mars. Then we discover that in 2040, a deep space research vessel known as the Event Horizon launched to explore boundaries of the solar system. She disappeared without a trace beyond the eighth planet Neptune. It is the worst space disaster on record. And as the movie picks up, we are now in 2047. As we go aboard the ship, the Lewis and Clark, we meet the crew. There is Sam Neill's character, Dr. Weir, who is apparently the inventor of the event Horizon and is just being added to the crew of the Lewis and Clark. Lawrence Fishburne plays Captain Miller, who of course is the captain of the Lewis and Clark. And then of course we meet the rest of the crew. Stark, Smith, Cooper, DJ, Peters, and Justin. They are notified that the event Horizon has reappeared after being gone for seven years. They, as a rescue ship, have to go and find out what has happened to the crew and why there are no signs of life. Now, the reason why the Event Horizon was missing for so long is Dr. Weir created a device called the Dimensional Gate, which would open up a black hole and send you off to another place instantaneously. But the real question is, where was it sent to? Now, for the rest of the film, the crew is dealing with horrifying hallucinations, and it just gets much worse from there. Philip Eisner wrote the script for this movie. Unfortunately, around that time, though, he did have a family tragedy, so he threw himself fully into the work and created the script. The way he shopped it around, though, is he said it was like The Shining in Space. And you can kind of tell with some of the sequences, especially the giant flow of blood coming at you. Paul W.S. Anderson was the director for this film. He had just recently come off the success of the original Mortal Kombat movie. Due to the success of that film, though, he was offered the ability of doing the sequel, Mortal Kombat Annihilation, but he turned that down. He also turned down the ability of doing the first X-Men movie, the X-Files movie, and Alien Resurrection. He, in fact, turned all of those movies down as he really enjoyed the script for Event Horizon. It's just unfortunate that the movie ended up being a bit of a box office flop. Anderson's next film would be another sci-fi movie called Soldier with Kurt Russell. During the production, Kurt Russell was able to tell that Anderson was still upset about what happened with Event Horizon. So he stated to him, forget about what's going on right now with your movie. In 15 years, that is the movie you're going to be glad that you made. And he was 100% correct, as it has seen quite the cult status. The rotating space station sequence from the beginning of the movie actually cost a third of the visual effects budget for the movie. If you didn't happen to notice, in a bit of bad luck, the airlock room that Justin is in is airlock number 13. The rotating tunnel, affectionately called the meat grinder, is supposed to be a representation of the nine levels of hell like in Dante's Inferno. One thing you may not have noticed is the attempt to predict the future in this film. Some of the patches that they're wearing are representations of the countries that they're from. For instance, Sam Neill has an Australian one, but instead of the Union Jack in the upper left-hand corner, it's an Aboriginal flag. There's also the 22-star European Union, and I don't have the picture here, but the American flag has 55 stars on it in this film. There is a spinning watch shown at the beginning of the film. This is actually an Omega Speedster, which is the same watch that both Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin wore when they did their mission to the moon. All of the actors in this film were encouraged to write their own backstories. Jason Isaacs even went so far to say that his character needed a very invasive surgery, and that's why the makeup department added that surgical scar down his chest. The spacesuits that the actors wear in this film actually weighed 65 pounds. They were so heavy and so awkward to sit in that they actually constructed hanging poles so the characters could just stand around during scenes. Throughout the film, Dr. Weir just begins to progress worse and worse. In fact, by the end of it, Sam Neill had to be in the makeup chair for seven to eight hours per day. Event Horizon definitely feels like a mixture of the Alien movies mixed with the Hellraiser movies. 
And part of that reason is that Clive Barker was brought on as an executive consultant. There's a moment early on in the movie where Dr. Weir opens some blinds and the noise that's heard is actually the sound of a door opening from the video game Doom. And speaking of Doom, both the creators of Doom 3 and Dead Space have stated that a lot of their inspiration came from the movie Event Horizon. Here are some casting possibilities. Amy Brenneman was up for both roles of Stark and Peters. The character of Dr. Weir almost went to Jeremy Irons, Scott Glenn, or Bill Pullman. The character of Captain Miller was actually turned down by Arnold Schwarzenegger, Tommy Lee Jones, and Bruce Willis. And now there are currently talks of Amazon Prime doing a television series based on Event Horizon, with Adam Wingard being the director. Event Horizon, in my opinion, is a great movie. It's definitely in my top 10 horror sci-fi movies of all time. So I'm going to give this movie a 4 out of 5. As for the trivia question from the beginning of this episode, What tabletop game was an inspiration for this film? There was a popular fan theory that Event Horizon is connected to the game series Warhammer 40k. And Philip Eisner actually came out and stated that not only was he a player of that game, but he was actually inspired by it. And if you'll notice, there's a lot of similarities between Event Horizon's version of Hell and an area called The Warp from Warhammer. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Askewed Reviews. If there's a movie you'd like to see, just make sure to suggest it in the comments. And as always, like, comment, share, and subscribe.